We can operate in love and people will get to see and taste of the unconditional love that God wants them to taste. You cannot perform unconditional love in a selfish manner. It won't work. As I was thinking concerning that, and he reminds me that love is character. And then he reminded me of the Pope. And I got kind of tickled because I saw uh, back here probably a couple of months back, they had him on the news where the Pope, uh, someone uh, reached out to touch him and touched him or pulled on him. And uh, he got out of character. And, and, and I, I was telling my wife, just kind of, you know, you see the Pope like this. He moves so graceful. He looks around and he carries that aura about him that he's holy, separate, you know. And when people say the Pope, you know, the eyes of the secular world, it's just like, whoa, the Pope. So there's a, one, there's a wonderful appearance. But what was funny was when the woman reached out and pulled on him and touched him, instantly he, he forgot that he was the Pope. And here's what happened. And the media caught it. And so the Lord reminded me, <laughs> love is character. Isn't that right? Love is not some phony projection, you know, some mystical seemingly that, you know, you know how people walk around heavy and mystical like this, you know, they're steeped in the word and all of that. But love is character, it's kindness, gentleness, long suffering. That's what God's looking for. He's not looking for wordy people, isn't that right? He's looking for people with such a relationship with God. 
that they become Christ-like. And Christ becomes formed in us by way of union and communion, right? Association will bring on assimilation. How many believe that? It is true. Sometimes stories told of a family that had a good son or daughter and that son or daughter got with the wrong group and spent quality time. The next thing you know, some behaviors start to manifest in that child. And all he was doing was listening, associating, and mingling. And it's that way when you mingle and associate with the Lord, the more you do it, the more you listen to him, the more you take heed, whether in prayer or abiding in the word, we start to take on that nature because the nature is already in us, but it doesn't always have right away like it should. This is one of God's great concerns for us. And I was reminded concerning love. Just on yesterday, I'll tell this, it just kind of blessed me. There were those going out to witness. And uh, my, my thing is this, is I don't want anybody to go out that are not accustomed to it. And it uh, doesn't matter. I'm not limited to one time going out during the month. If someone new is going out and want to witness and we don't have sufficient amount of those that to help them, then I'll just go, whether I went last week or week before. I'm concerned that they, if they want to go and should go, that they have someone else to go with them. So to make a long story short, we had gotten in and, uh, from tremendous effective mission we're out of town for a couple of days. God wrought some wonderful, wonderful um, deliverance and healing. And uh, so we came back. And then on that Friday, we had another thing that God had given us to do. So it was, we was pretty tired coming back. And as we came back, uh, and then Saturday trying to get back, uh, get our body rested and everything, and I think I, Got up early and then fell back asleep around about 10 or 11. And, but um, there were some newcomers, new for the first time, I guess some were. And just knowing that they were coming, I forgot to check with Tor to find out who might be coming to, to sort of make sure that there's someone there to be there <clears throat> for them. And so well, the girls took it upon themselves just to give us a rest, knowing that we had come, been on a mission and just got back to rest. Just took it upon themselves to go out. And uh, I knew that was a tremendous victory for my daughters. But it really blessed me. And um, it blessed me a lot. But all week long, the Lord had been just kind of dealing with us about the supremacy of love. And that was just one of those things that I said, you know, that's really good. So when we can capture a selfless life we can operate in love and people will get to see and taste of the unconditional love that God wants them to taste you cannot perform unconditional love in a selfish manner it won't work it's totally unselfish I was tickled when I, one day I got, felt real spiritual and I wanted to ask, said, okay, God, I want to win souls. This was some time back. I want to win souls. You know, I haven't won souls. I need to win more souls. And I just, so in, every day, talking to the Lord. So I sat down to eat one day, just hungry. Someone called and there was an opportunity. I was so hungry. But it challenged what I said. You know what I'm saying? And uh, all I had to do, I could always have eaten, but I'm saying this flesh will always challenge love because love is not of our own selves. 
doesn't come from our own selves. So we're always, we are actually always given opportunities to demonstrate the agape love of God. And so when a person, according to 1 John, when a person has developed in that area of learning to die to themselves and Christ living, God has actually accomplished his divine purpose for that life. He is satisfied that that person understands what God wants. And uh, so it's a marvelous thing. And so our goal, we have this goal in mind, is to remind us all, and I say all because we all have need of that. But just a closer look here, briefly, at this supremacy of love. Love is supreme uh, to tongues and speech. It's supreme to great knowledge and understanding. Superior to great faith. Superior to great generosity and goods and self. It's supreme, superior to all of this. I thought about uh, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, the biggest philanthropists in the, in the world, I believe, according to uh, some, some information. But if these men do not know God because God is love, right? The good deeds are okay, but it will not profit if they never have that love. That's what he said. It profits me nothing. Isn't that what he said? Oh yes, it does a good, some good to humanity, but I'm, the point that we're making is the supremacy of love. Oh my goodness. Love is, love is, it must be our target. It must be our goal. It must be the goal. And when, when I make and when you make love our goal, it changes a lot of attitudes. Somebody say attitude. It changes a lot of attitudes because the selfish attitude will kick in. And all of a sudden when someone begins to think about love, this is okay. That's, I'm zeroing in on me. Let me get the attention off me. Because it's not about us, right? Not about us. Paul said, in the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Paul went on to say, I die Dearly, he learned that in order for Christ to live in him, effectively, he had to die. Paul had to die. Peter had to die. James had to die. Jesus had to die. Death to the flesh so that God may live. So he mentions the supremacy of love and then he brings, uh, but as I looked at this, the Lord reminded me uh, of the character of love. And now this, this is, you know, some could be reworded, but listen to this. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or envious. Love is not boastful, proud, or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable, but forgiving, not quick-tempered or easily provoked, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in truth, never gives up, never loses faith, always hopeful, and endures in every circumstance. So as I thought about that, the Spirit of God brought my attention. He said, that's why we need healing. Because 
the Spirit of God lives in us. And someone may say, well, if God lives in us, why can't he do what he wants to do at any time? He lives in us. Very good question. Sila. Isn't that right? Meditate on that thought. He wants to. And, uh, but as the more we are healed in the, from the areas that of pain and trauma and things that brought the jealousy and envy, the things that made us proud, the things that, that made us insist on having our own way, the things that, that, that makes us hold on to a grudge, or the things, you know, all of these things that happen to us in life, they begin to fashion and mold and shape us the way that we weren't supposed to be shaping, right? And so God comes into our lives and he starts a process. First, he forgives us and he cleanses us completely, forgives us of everything, everything he forgives us. And now we are not guilty of anything. But he did, did this and he's only beginning the sanctifying process. That process of purifying the heart cleansing the conscience, purifying the conscience, and just and cleansing the spirit of man, taking away guilt, feelings, condemnation, taking away anger and, and fears and hate and resentment and bitterness, taking that, just healing us and healing us and healing us and healing us uh, so that he can look at this finished product. And the angels in heaven and the principalities and powers begin to say, my God, God is awesome. God is awesome. Hallelujah. And that's what they, when they look at that, what God is doing, they begin to see that God made fallen humanity, turns them around, makes him a monument of his grace. A display so everybody can see the many, the many-sided wisdom of this God that we serve. He's wiser than any Satan could ever be. Satan can never outsmart God. He's created, and God is creator. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so God, God is not going to defeat him on this earth with angels he's going to defeat him with the ones that Satan defeated in the garden and that's mankind look at somebody say that's you and I come on let's give God some praise hallelujah hallelujah glory to God hallelujah glory to God Satan gets mad when people live holy lives. He gets mad when they walk in love. He gets mad because he knows they are more dangerous to his purpose when they do it. Right? Yes, yeah, so don't be intimidated by the devil. He's already defeated him. He knows his time is short. And so God says, I want to heal. And that's why he's been healing. And that's why he's been healing. That's why he's been delivering, because he's a deliverer. And as he heal and deliver us, and then he will challenge us to get in that word. Isn't that right? And I get in that word. I want you to renew the way you've been thinking. You know, you, you thought the, your minds were shaped based on the hurts and the rejections and the pain. But now I want you to think differently. You got, you, I want you to look into my word, because now you know you have been loved unconditionally I love you that way and I bless you and I, I was uh, I was faithful to you no matter what happened you've missed the mark many times but I, I was faithful to you because I want you to understand that your value is not placed on what you do isn't that right you have value hallelujah but see when we come up when our perceptions are twisted, when we're child, our childhood perceptions, they get twisted. Sometimes we misconstrue our value for what the wrong that we've done. And God doesn't want that. 
You want us to understand you are valuable no matter what. And so it's got to start there. Isn't that right? I understand that I'm valuable to the kingdom of God. Say it with me. I understand that I'm valuable to the kingdom of God. But I want to become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is love. And so he's going to love us until, hallelujah, he's formed in us. Glory to God. Until he's formed in us. Until he sees a reflection of himself. Hallelujah, God. Oh, you've got to give him praise for his goodness. He's a great God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Many waters cannot quench this kind of love. This kind of love is so penetrable. It's just awesome. God is love. Oh, love dismantles fears. Makes a person lay down their weapons. Love. Are you hearing me? If somebody got weapons against you, love them. And they'll lay down their weapons. Hallelujah. They'll lay down their weapons uh, to fight against you. Because love causes a person to dismantle their fears and anger against you. Hallelujah. Well, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Scarcely would the person die for a righteous man or a good man. But God, when we were enemies, Christ died for us. And once a person sees it and they hear that news, they get saved. They just want to love Jesus, right? Hallelujah. It was love that lifted them out of the miry clay. And it is love that will sustain us. Let's walk in love. Let's make it our goal. It is so important to make it our goal. Because if you don't make it your goal, you more than likely will not. Reach the goal. We want to reach our goal. As we reach our goal. To love one another. Love is kind. And patient. Love keeps no record of wrong. Love does not demand and insist on its own way. Love suffers a long time. It does not envy. It's not easily provoked. God is love, somebody. God is love. And he wants us to be not like the Pope. <laughs> not like the Pope. <laughs> Hallelujah, but like Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. God bless you today. I want you to stand with me. God supplies that which we need. God supplies. It's listed in Galatians as one of the fruits. It is listed in 1 John as the character of God, the nature of God. It's listed in Song of Solomon at that which is strong as death. It is mentioned in John 13 is the manner in which people will know that we are the true disciples. It is mentioned in Paul's book Ephesians and he says Follow after God like dear children and walk in love. Love is key. 
is supreme above all the things that we can go after in a spiritual sense. It's supreme. And so I don't know about you today, but if you sense God speaking to your heart, just prepare your hearts now. And whenever God speaks to us, there's not a feeling of condemnation. When God speaks to us, there's a feeling of brokenness and contriteness, a sense of remorse. I want to make it right. That's how you know God is moving. That's how God, you know, God is moving on the heart. So while we are preparing our hearts, Father, I thank you right now for reminding me and reminding the body of the supremacy of love. Love never fails. Prophecies will fail. Tongues will cease. Knowledge is only in part. But love abides forever. It's that love that is God. That you've endowed us with the spirit of love. So that we can allow you to blossom in us. To mature this love. That is on the inside of us. Have your precious way today. Strengthen some heart. Keep us in your wonderful grace. Undo any burdens that one may feel. Touched by your power. Heal our souls. In the precious name of Jesus. And Lord we're going to honor you for it. I thank you for the body. I thank you for the congregation. I ask that you will move into the homes. And bring peace. I ask that you move upon the church. At large and the churches bring joy oh Lord our strength I ask that you move upon us as a people that we may move in purpose and in the will of God thank you Father for I know that you're hearing me now and I honor you for each and every one that's here and so-